Hello, BioFans. We are working on the diabetes lecture today. So make sure you have your diabetes lecture skeleton notes in front of you. I'm going to break it up into different pieces for you, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, what happens when you eat? So when you eat, you're, you're eating all this food. It's getting broken down into different molecules. Uh, eventually, it's getting broken down into glucose. And that glucose has to be taken into your cells. And there's something called insulin that basically takes that glucose into your cell. So there's a little cell, okay? And these little dots, we're going to say this is all glucose, okay? Now, in order for these dots, in order for this glucose to go into your cells, you need something called insulin. It's a hormone that's made by your pancreas. There's insulin in green. So it's like a little Pac-Man. It comes in there. It grabs the glucose, sort of holds on to it, and then it takes it, it escorts it into the cell. And that is the way that we get glucose into the cells. Glucose couldn't get in on its own without the help of insulin. Okay? I also want to remind you, insulin is made by the pancreas, which gives, which is why we call the pancreas uh, an endocrine organ, because it releases hormones. All right, moving on. What happens when you're hungry? When you're hungry, your glucose level is low, like when you wake up in the morning and you're having breakfast and you're breaking that fast. There's another hormone called glucagon. Glucagon is also made by the pancreas. And glucagon basically causes your liver to break down glycogen. I know all these words sound the same. Glucagon causes the liver to break down glycogen and turn that into glucose. So you get the three G's here, glucagon, glycogen, and glucose. This in turn helps raise your blood sugar levels. All right, let's move on. So what's blood glucose? It's the amount of sugar you have in your blood. Uh, it's very important to keep those as normal as possible. Notice this uh, graphic I have on the top left over here. Uh, green is basically where you want to be. Sometimes when the blood sugar is too low, we call that hypoglycemia. And it can actually have a bunch of symptoms down here in the last bullet point. So it can cause uh, shaking or a fast heartbeat, sweating, dizziness, hunger, vision, problems, fatigue, and so on. So this is called hypoglycemia. It's low blood sugar. All right. Let's move on to our next slide. What to do in case of hypoglycemia. So I won't go over all of these, but basically if you have low blood sugar, you need to raise your blood sugar. Okay, so glucose tablets, uh, or let's go to the bullet point where it says one cup of milk. Why do you think milk would be a good option in case you have hypoglycemia? Think about what milk contains. Lactose, right? Remember the O-S-E ending? Makes it a sugar. Okay, and then uh, the last one, honey, that's my favorite. So that's something that could definitely help if someone's experiencing hypoglycemia. All right, I remember my dad used to always, because he was diabetic, he always carried hard candy in his pockets just in case. Okay, moving on, what to do in case of hypoglycemia. So a lot of them, a lot of these hypoglycemic reactions are pretty mild. Uh, and within 10 to 15 minutes, you know, the person, the patient will be just fine. Sometimes it can happen so quickly that it can actually cause something like a seizure. Um, it can cause the person to become unconscious and they won't be able to swallow. In case someone you know and love, in case this happens to them, uh, basically your job is to not give them anything by mouth. That's a big no-no. You just call 911. If you're certified to use it, you can inject the person with glucagon, but otherwise you just call 911. All right, moving on to, uh, can it be too high? Can your blood sugar be too high? And the answer is yes, it can be too high. Uh, what happens, this is called hyperglycemia, okay? And this is sort of the red range up here. It can be too high. What this means is that uh, the amount of sugar you have in your body is possibly not being taken into your cells, Okay, and we'll talk about what that means. But some symptoms down in the bottom, extreme thirst, frequent urination, dry skin, blurred vision, and so on. So there are two different types of diabetes that we'll talk about in our class. There are more types, but we're just going to cover types 1 and 2.
Okay, the causes can be genetic, uh, they can be related to obesity, but not necessarily always, and the lack of exercise plays a huge role here. And this is actually a disease that affects a lot of people. Six million people are unaware that they have diabetes, and it is the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S., unfortunately. All right, so let's talk about type 1 first. So type 1 is when your body cannot produce insulin or it produces very little insulin. So this is something that people are typically born with. Uh, they have this pretty early on in life. Um, it's something that you typically don't get later on in life. Uh, so what happens if you don't make insulin? You basically have to have a pump or give yourself shots, um, pods, all kinds of different things as you can see on the right hand side over here. And about 10% of diabetes patients have type 1 diabetes. This used to be called juvenile diabetes. It is no longer called that. We call it just type 1 diabetes. Um, and most people who have type 1 diabetes have some history of diabetes in their family. Okay, symptoms of type 1 are basically fatigue, blurred vision, slow healing, um, increased appetite, increased thirst and urination. Now here's a question. Uh, what I want you to do real quick is I want you to, as soon as you see this question right here, um, what does a diabetes patient need to do to keep their blood glucose at a safe level? So what I want you to do is go back in your notes so far. I want you to pause the video in just a moment. And I want you to uh, look through your notes, look through what you've done so far, and make sure that you're answering this question. This is your question number one. So I try to get these notes for you on the side. Let's see if I'm able to get those for you. But your job basically is to answer this question. What does a diabetes patient need to do to keep their blood glucose at a safe level? Now, I'm really talking about just kind of, it could be, I know you haven't done diabetes 2 yet, but diabetes 1 is what we're focusing on. There we go. Okay, so I've highlighted these in green. All right, I know that yours is all in black, but up to question one, basically, to the end of question one, this is the part that I want you to have done so far. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and pause the video and answer that question. All right, we will move on. Type 2 diabetes. All right, this is the type that my dad had. So uh, this used to be called adult onset diabetes. It's no longer called that because, unfortunately, a lot of kids, even around the age of uh, 5 or 6, are, are having it as well. So we just call it type 2 diabetes. This is when your body does produce insulin, but your cells no longer want to respond to insulin, so they become insulin resistant, um, unfortunately. And basically, there are different reasons for it. Uh, part of it is because uh, of a lot of pressure on the pancreas for you know, lack of exercise or excess body weight, hypertension, which is all about high blood uh, pressure, and high cholesterol levels. So a lot of this has to do with your habits as far as exercise and diet. Okay. Symptoms of type 2 diabetes are dry skin, numbness in your hands and feet, blurred vision, dehydration, and random weight loss or weight gain. Now, what can help with type 2 diabetes? As I mentioned before, it's usually about a lack of exercise, so exercising actually helps a lot. Exercising uh, does get those cells to want to take in glucose again with the help of insulin, whereas before they were resistant to it. Okay. Also, what could help? As our first bullet point mentions, it's really about eating healthy, so eating fresh fruits and vegetables and whole, whole grains and so on, just really making sure that you are living a, a healthy lifestyle. Okay, question number two. This one is a two-part question. So what could this lead to considering blood glucose? Okay, and what can a patient with type 2 diabetes do to help reverse this process? So these, this question, both of these questions are both about type 2 diabetes. So what I'd like for you to do again is go back answer this question so pause the video go back and answer this question look through your notes now what I've done is I've highlighted these in red so the part that you're seeing in red is the part that I want you to be doing on your skeleton notes alright going back to our lecture 
So complications of type 2 diabetes. Uh, unfortunately, type 2 diabetes can result in nerve damage, poor blood circulation. Uh, these sometimes make our feet vulnerable to skin sores, ulcers that can be really difficult to treat. Okay. Sometimes because of such situations, there are amputations of lower limbs, of feet. Um, unfortunately, that's just one of the things that comes with it if we're not careful. Uh, the good news is that proper diabetes management, it can actually help with that. But just know that type 2 diabetes does come with, with this issue. That's an issue type 1 diabetes does not have. Okay, so I have a TED Talk for you here. What I'd like for you to do is uh, I want you to, in a moment, pause the video, watch this TED Talk. It's not very long. It's called What a Dogs Teach Humans About Diabetes. Uh, as soon as you have finished your TED Talk, I want you to fill in the area where it says, what, after watching the video, what a dogs uh, teach humans about diabetes, teach you what are three things that you learned from it. As you can see, I've, I have that here in blue. Okay, so what I'd like for you to do is pause the video, or excuse me, pause my video, watch the TED Talk, answer that question, and then come back to the video. Okay, now that you are back, I hope you enjoyed that TED Talk. It was pretty adorable. Let's move on to uh, our myths. Now, I'm not going to go over these. There are nine different myths, okay? Your job is to go through each one of these, look at the myth and the fact for each one, and at the end, I want you to pick three of these myths that actually surprise you the most. So as you can see, there's myth one, two, three, and so on. I want you to take your time going through them, write down the ones that surprise you the most, uh, and then that's it, and then you are done. All right, this has been our diabetes lecture. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be sure to answer your questions in class. Uh, be sure to write down any questions you have in the bottom after the choose three myths. All right, see you tomorrow.